Welcome to Knoxville Raceway Inside Line with your host, Eric Arnold, presented by Lucas Oil, FVP, Casey's General Store, Speed Sport, Arnold Motor Supply, RacingJunk.com, and Pella Motors. Good evening, race fans. Welcome to Knoxville Raceway Inside Line. Uh, my name is Eric Arnold. I'll be your host, Knoxville Raceway Track Historian. Thank you for joining us tonight here on KBOE 104.9 and at KBOERadio.com. Tonight, our guest is going to be Jamie Ball. So Jamie Ball calling in here in a little while. Jamie picking up his first 360 feature win this past uh, Saturday night. Jamie had a really good race, so it'll be uh, good to talk with him. We had a really good show this past Saturday night. It uh, was a Knoxville Raceway Hall of Fame induction night, also mid-season championships, so the features were a little bit longer with additional laps for those. Uh, congratulations to the Hall of Fame inductees this year, Craig Egan, Randy Bryson, Tony Morrow, Grant Rankin, and Jeff Tuttle. Uh, all those guys were, were very deserving uh, people for the Hall of Fame this year. Uh, Saturday was a gorgeous day weather-wise. It was 84 degrees. Uh, humidity was about 50%, and uh, there was no wind to speak of. You didn't see the flags waving at all at the racetrack. Uh, Katie Davis sang our national anthem, and Katie is by far uh, far and above the, the best uh, anthem singer that we have at the Knoxville Raceway each year. So it was a, a pleasure to have her on hand. And we'll get started with our, our race recap of this past Saturday night. Looking at the 305 class first, uh, Matthew Stelzer set quick time for the second time this season. He had a lap of 17.559. Uh, the heat race winners were Jeff Wilkie, Tanner Edwards, and Mitchell Alexander. We had 26 305s on hand on this night. It was a season high car count for the 305 class. Uh, the A main for the 305s, unfortunately, it became a bit of an endurance race as we had 41 minutes from the start of the race when they pushed off to the checkered flag. The race was slowed with four cautions and two reds, and uh, there was an accident involving a 17-year-old McKenna Hasse who uh, was treated for a concussion, but she's okay. She's home and doing well. Uh, the race itself, uh, Kevin Hetrick kind of set the pace early, and then uh, Jay Kinder caught up with him with some of the cautions and went around him and took the lead on lap six and went on to get the win. In the 360 division, we had 20 cars on hand, which was the season low for that class this year. Uh, Nate Van Haften set quick time for the first time uh, this season with a 16.495, followed by uh, Justin Henderson, Joe Beaver, John Egan, and Billy Alley was fifth. It's good to have Billy Alley back again this past week, Billy uh, driving from Nebraska. With only uh, 20 cars, there were only two heat races on this night, and the heat race winners were Calvin Landis and Jamie Ball. In the 360A main, uh, Billy Alley, who was scheduled to start in the second row, he pulled in before the race started. He was showing some smoke there under the hood and uh, ended his night a little too early for him. Uh, this was an entertaining race. Uh, it was a, Although it looks on paper, Jamie Ball started on the front row and won this race, uh, he definitely earned it. Uh, and you could tell that he was hungry for a win. Uh, it was an 18-lap race rather than 15 laps for a midseason championship. And uh, so Jamie would, would go out and get the lead early. Russ Hall challenged him for the lead and actually held the lead momentarily but didn't officially lead a lap at the flag stand. I think that was on lap six. And then uh, Jamie fought back, regained the position, and then uh, Justin Henderson entered the fray there. Uh, Justin started fourth, and he worked his way past Russ Hall, then got up around uh, Jamie on lap 14. But uh, Jamie was not to be denied on this night. He had his elbows up, he drove around the outside of Justin Henderson, and regained the point and went on to win his first career 360 feature at the Knoxville Raceway. Uh, Jamie was pretty excited. He kind of proclaimed that it was the best day of his life winning uh, the race at, at Knoxville. And, uh, boy, when I saw him after the race, he was uh, sure smiling big, taking phone calls, and lots of people congratulating him. So a well-deserved win. He's been close a few times in the past, so it was great to see Jamie kind of break through and finally get that win in the 360 class. Moving on to the 410 division. Uh, your top 10 in qualifying was Clint Garner. He set quick time for the first time this season, a lap of 15.808. He was followed by uh, Justin Henderson, Brian Brown, Linton Jeffrey, Daniel Lasowski, Ian Madsen, Bronson Mason, Craig Delansky, Terry McCarl, and Don Droud. 15.8 uh, is one of the slower quick times we've had in a while. Uh, he Garner went out ninth in the order, and it was a big step up for him. Previous uh, time trial finish this season was 14.7 going into this week for so for them to hit quick time uh, was a pretty big step up for them it was a parker engines one two finish with him and henderson timing first and second the heat race winners in the 410 class was linton jeffrey 
Dusty Zomer and Terry McCarl. Uh, all three heat race winners were coming from either the second or the third row, so it was really good racing there in, in the heat races. The B main was won by Larry Ball Jr. And then uh, the A main was 25 laps for mid-season championship night. Uh, green all the way, other than the initial start, Tasker Phillips had a flip, and uh, he was done for the night, uh, but they didn't complete a lap, so the next 25 laps went nonstop. Craig Delansky jumped out to lead the first lap, but then Linton Jeffrey uh, battled with him and was able to take the lead away from him for several laps. Delansky would regain the lead on lap seven and never look back. At one point, he was leading by four and a half seconds. Uh, he ended up winning by three seconds over Justin Henderson. Henderson started there in the fourth row and was able to work his way up and start uh, reeling in Delansky a little bit there the last few laps, but he ran out of time. Uh, the racetrack was perfect. Uh, if you haven't checked out the highlights on the Knoxville Raceway YouTube channel, I would highly recommend it. Uh, the track had three grooves with a, a bottom and a middle and a top, and it was just one of those nights where everything worked out uh, for as far as track prep, and it held up great and uh, made for some really good racing on this night. Should be a really good show coming up uh, for Knoxville Dirt Dreams on MAV TV later on in the year when uh, this week comes around. Your 410 A main finish, Craig Delansky your winner, Justin Henderson second, Brian Brown started sixth and made his way up to third, Danny Lasowski fourth, Bronson Mason fifth, Zomer sixth, Jeffrey seventh, Heskin eighth, Terry McCarl ninth, Clint Garner tenth. Hard charger was Justin Henderson coming from seventh to second. So looking at our point standings uh, after this past week, Matthew Stelzer is your point leader in the 305 class with Jay Kinder second and Steve Brazil third. Uh, the 305 class is off the next two weeks as uh, we have twin features coming up the next two weeks. We'll talk a little bit more about those later. In the 360 class, in the point race, John Egan is your leader by 33 points over Joe Beaver. Russ Hall is third, Jamie Ball fourth, Nate Van Haften fifth. Uh, Justin Henderson and uh, the Brian Sunbeam number one team is leading the owner's points in the 360 class. In the 410 division, uh, Terry McCarl is your point leader by 193 points over Justin Henderson in second. Ian Madsen third. Craig Delansky has worked his way up to fourth. Brian Brown is sitting in fifth, even though he's missed one week. And Linton Jeffrey sixth. Davey Huskins seventh. Zomer eighth. Bronson Mason, your former track champion, uh, last year's track champion, is sitting in ninth. And Clint Garner has uh, worked his way into the top ten in points. Good Clint uh, moving up to the 410 division this year is working his way uh, back up to speed there to compete with these guys, and he's been improving steadily every week and is, is having some good shows here. So we'll see uh, how he'll do here the second half of the season. I'm kind of excited to see what that number 40 car is going to do. So there's your uh, race recap for this past week. When we come back here in a little bit, we will have Jamie Ball on the line, so stay tuned. This is Knoxville Raceway Inside Line on KBOE 104.9. Welcome back to the Knoxville Raceway Inside Line. Tonight on the show, we've got this week's 360 feature winner, Jamie Ball. Jamie, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Yep, good run for you guys this week, picking up your first feature win. It was quite the race there. Uh, you want to talk about it a little? Yeah, it was uh, definitely a long time coming. Uh, ever since I started racing at Knoxville, I've always wanted to win, and I've only been able to win one 305 feature until uh, Saturday. And it's, like I said, been a long time coming, mainly from my uh, injury that I had in 2012. Just, uh, you know, it's been a real struggle. It's been a real uh, fitness battle for me and kind of a real m mindset battle, too. It's, I've made a lot of mistakes and lost quite a few races uh, that I had been leading on yellows or got up to the front pretty quickly and not been able to seal the deal just because of my inexperience. And this weekend, when uh, Russ and Justin Henderson both got by me at different times, I just I think I wanted it more than they did. I, I refused to lose. I uh, looked forward and tried to find a different line that was going to work to get around them and uh, ended up getting the victory there and just uh will to win i guess is a good way to put how how i achieved this victory on saturday yeah the duncans definitely had the track uh kind of in your favor able to race wherever you wanted to yeah the, the duncans they're they're the best in the business they uh there's nobody even close that can touch what they do and what they do consistently for for years and years and this year they've uh the berm was cut up. It was kind of more of a wall at a 90-degree angle. And uh, this week they changed it to where it was more at a 45-degree angle, kind of like it had been in previous years. And they got it watered down to where the berm even had a little bit of moisture on it. And 
the line was there and uh, any moisture that was on the bottom, uh, some of the guys would throw off into the middle and it provides for a, a good line in the middle, which is typically very hard to come by and, uh, unless you're donning shots for the most part at Knoxville. But it was, uh, you could run the top, bottom, or the middle. So it was a three line groove that you could, you could run about anywhere. And it uh, definitely benefited me. Yep, definitely did. Um, let's talk about, uh, you've kind of uh, graduated from racing the, the outlaw dirt carts down at English Creek. Uh, just talk about when you started racing there and how old were you and what classes did you run in? I started racing at English Creek in 2006. My uh, math teacher, Nick DeMoss, had an extra go-kart, and my mom finally felt comfortable enough with a chassis and a wing over my head that uh, she was going to start letting me race. So I jumped into that for a little while on a limited basis and then uh, bought my own and went full-time racing there and raced there from 2006 to 2009. and got 30 feature wins and multiple national championships in uh, 2009 I was a track champion at English Creek Speedway and was just able to translate a lot of a lot of my experience there and uh, into sprint cars uh, Kyle Larson and Brad Sweet and Rico Abreu they came up from those and in the 500 class that I ran we have 100 horsepower and weigh 450 pounds and that's more uh, horsepower to weight ratio than what a 410 sprint car is so I think it definitely helps a lot of us. I think that's why you see a lot of guys come out of the Outlaw Dirt Cart ranks and really have success in sprint cars. And uh, just being around Knoxville here with my with my dad racing sprint cars in 98, it, it was where I wanted to go. So it was uh, the next step in the path of uh, my career. Yeah, and you went uh, down to Charlotte to race in one of those races here just recently, didn't you? Yeah, just uh, uh, right over on my birthday, actually, on May 20th and May 21st. The National Speed Sport News put on a race on at Millbridge Speedway in Salisbury, North Carolina. Uh, during NASCAR week down there for when Sprint Cup and Nationwide and Trucks and all that was down at Charlotte Motor Speedway. And I flew down there and raced for Darby DeArmond and uh, SKE Carts and uh, Top Machine Performance Engines down there and was able to put it in the show and I ended up 8th out of 57 carts with the likes of Paul McMahon, Joey Saldana, J.J. Ailey, uh, Rico Abreu, and the owner of QRC Carts, Jimmy Elledge. And the only one of them that beat me was the owner of QRC, so it was pretty fulfilling to beat some of those top guys that that race for a living you bet and uh um also um you're probably one of the few guys in the pit area at knoxville that actually has a college education Uh, i think there's you and davy heskin and maybe some others i'm I'm not thinking of but uh just talk a little bit about uh you know aib is sponsoring your car and and and, uh, kind of what you went to school for and how that translates into what you're doing now uh daily yeah i think it is pretty unique to have a not, not only an associate's, but I also have a bachelor's. Um, so I have two degrees, and I got them both from AIB College of Business in Des Moines. AIB is uh, strictly about business, and you can uh, really get down to it from day one when you get there. You're not taking general education classes like you would, uh, like taking basket weaving at the University of Iowa or anything like that. You uh, really get a focus, and uh, kind of throughout my life, that's what I've been is focused. I've always done real well in school, and been focused on main goals and you know really ultimately been focused on racing and uh, part of the deal with my my parents was that they wanted me to get an education before I moved forward with a whole lot of out of racing and I went to AIB and loved it from day one they offer a a degree in three program where you can get your bachelor's degree in uh, three years or under by going during the summers and I went and achieved uh, achieved that program I was probably one of their first people to really accomplish that and I did it in about a total of two and a half years and uh, that's very fulfilling. When, when I was graduating, uh, the kids I went to school with were still had a year left of school. And I got an associate's in sales and marketing and then a bachelor's in business administration. And uh, it really helped me get AIB. When I went and pitched them my program and uh, tried to get them on as a sponsor, they just kind of looked at me and laughed. And I thought, oh, no, here we go. And they said, I don't know how we could say no. They said, we can absolutely tell that you are an AIB grad and that you have taken what we've taught you and uh, you know put it to good use. And ever since then, AIB has been on board on the right side arm guard of my car with the AIB logo on there and developed great relationships, not only with uh, some of the teachers and students that I went with, but uh, President Williams and uh, some of their marketing and other things. And AIB is really starting to come around. They're becoming one of the main focuses of kind of the Midwest if you don't want to go to a big university. And they're developing a lot of their sports programs. They now have soccer and basketball and volleyball and golf and a, a bunch of other different deals that they're participating in that I think is really going to make them one of the top-notch schools more than they already are. 
Yeah, and uh, you can tell you've gone to school for marketing because you're you're active with social media and you, you definitely work hard to market yourself and your race team in that regard. Social media, in my eyes, is one of the best things that, I guess, depending on how you use it, can make you or break you uh, in the public eye, and it's it's free. I don't I don't get why a lot of people don't do it more. You can uh, you know be on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram and Vine and all the other different things that they have, and everybody wants to get to know you more. I think that's one of the things that a lot of people miss out on. And Knoxville specifically is you can become a more popular driver. You can become more marketable to the to your sponsors and being marketable is what really gets you sponsors if you can win races but nobody likes you or nobody knows who you are other than that you win races it's uh, kind of a whole different deal so i think by being active on social media it gives potential sponsors and my current sponsors a lot more exposure you know you can tell them how many followers you have or how many mentions you have or you know show them different pictures and fans and when i won on saturday there was two students or alumni or faculty, I'm not sure exactly who they were, but they were tweeting that uh, AIB alum Jamie Ball just won his first uh, victory in Knoxville, and they tagged AIB in it. And I think that things like that that really gets your sponsors going and uh, really benefits them good. It really puts their money to good use, and it's, it's good for us because it's not something that I have to pay for or totally take a lot of time out of. It's just, uh, for me, it just comes natural. I guess I'm fairly technologic, technological and just, uh, I kind of get it, I guess, with my marketing background. Like you said, it, it just makes sense, and I don't quite understand why people don't utilize it more as a, as a tool to help them. Yep, and it's going to translate for you uh, with the Mav TV deal. That should be uh, pretty cool to watch yourself win uh, here in a few weeks when that will air. Oh, I, I cannot wait for that. I already <laughs> contacted Brandon Bingham here a few days ago at Bing Bang Media and was asking him what date it was going to be on because myself and my family and my sponsors were all very pumped for it. I think it's going to make for some great TV. Um, anymore, you see a lot of reality shows where things are so fake, you know, like Pawn Stars and different, you know, Storage Wars and things like that, that it's almost not fun to watch anymore because you just know it's not real. And I think with uh, what Knoxville Raceway is doing, it really provides for true excitement. It, it lets uh, the racers and the fans show show who they really are and show how fulfilling getting that win for my team and I on Saturday was. There. When I said it was the best day of my life, I wasn't kidding. There's been nothing more fulfilling, nothing I've worked harder for than getting that win at Knoxville. And uh, when I got it, I think it's going to make for excellent TV and uh, hopefully help out the ratings a little bit and uh, make make a few people tune in again the following week. Yeah, let's hope so. Uh, you got any other sponsors you want to plug here while I got you on the air? Yeah, uh, we wouldn't be able to do none of this without our sponsors. Racing is a very expensive sport. And uh, we don't have no large sponsors, but we have a bunch of little ones that really make up for, for a good team. And uh, starting off with them, uh, Bangor Construction, Matt Jones Trucking, JJ Kane Auctioneers, AIB College of Business, Spokane Auctions, um, Iowa State Savings Bank here in Knoxville, L&J Automotive, L&J Enterprise, and all of our product sponsors that uh, make this possible. I just couldn't do it without them and you know, without my crew, uh, my girlfriend, Sadie, my mom and dad, Jody Josh Hagwood. Anthony, Devin, Taylor, Cassie, Matt Jones, and Dwight. Uh, it's it's the little things that really matter, and uh, not not only myself but my crew and my sponsors. We work our tail off to be as successful as we are at Knoxville. Well, uh, Jamie, congratulations on your win this week. Thanks for joining us here on uh, the Knoxville Race Week Inside Line. Best of luck to you the rest of the season. Yeah, thanks for having me, and uh, have a good night. All right, that's Jamie Ball, everybody. That's great to have a, a guy like Jamie on the show. A guy who's full of energy, and I think he's got. Uh, a lot of things going for him, and uh, he's young, he's marketable, like he said, and looking forward to see where his career uh, path leads him uh, after after this season. And it uh, sounds like they're going to be moving up to the 410 class next year. His dad, Larry, is driving a 410 this year, and they're kind of uh, he's kind of a test pilot in a way. But uh, Larry himself has been doing better as the season goes, and uh, sounds like they're trying to get that car dialed in for Jamie when he wants to move up to the 410s next year. So we'll be right back with the Knoxville Raceway Inside Line to wrap up the show. Stay tuned here on KBOE 104.9. Welcome back to the Knoxville Raceway Inside Line. Coming up this Saturday night at the Knoxville Raceways, week number 11 of the Lucas Oil Knoxville Championship Cup Series. It is Marion, Cow- Marion County Cattlemen Corn and Soybean Growers Night. Say that uh, three times real fast. 
360 Twin Features Night. So Separation Saturday is what I like to call it for the 360 class this Saturday night. Two features. And then uh, the following week will be 410 Twin Features for those guys. So always a big night in the, the points championship race on Twin Features Night. We also will have uh, some uh, visitors that no normally grace uh, with Twin Features Nights. So you typically get, it sounds like Brian Clausen will be there. Uh, Roger Crockett and uh, Wayne Johnson possibly doing double duty as well. So uh, always uh, some extra cars to fill in already a very competitive field at Knoxville on Saturday night. Uh, reminders, Casey's General Stores receipts. Save your receipts of $50 or more. Uh, within uh, this past week, you can get two tickets for $20. That's a savings of $10 total there. Seniors, 60, ages and up is a $3 savings. Show your ID there at the ticket window to get your discount seniors. Pella Corporation, Nationwide Insurance, and Farm Bureau employees, show your company ID and you will receive a $5 discount as well. The Marion County Fair is coming up here in July. Uh, it kicks off Friday night, July 11th, with hairball and concert. Tickets are $15. Get a hold of the ticket office at the Knoxville Raceway uh, for information about those. And Monday, July 14th, is the English Creek Outlaw Dirt Carts. Uh, that should be an interesting event with the special track they're going to build there on the front straightaway and uh, part of the, the work area there. Uh, July 17th is be the IMCA Harris Clash for Modifieds. Pretty much the uh, Super Bowl of modified racing for those guys. So it'd be great to, to see a lot of our local guys that we race at Oskaloosa uh, each uh, Wednesday night. We should see some of those guys there at the Harris Clash that Thursday, July 17th. July 31st, the Arnold Motor Supply 360 Nationals kicks off Southern Iowa Sprint Week. That runs through Saturday, August 2nd. Sunday, August 3rd, is the third annual Cap and Tandy Classic. Last year we had a little over 80 cars entered for that uh, 410 only show on Sunday night. And then Monday will be the Front Row Challenge here in Oskaloosa at the Southern Iowa Speedway on August 4th. Then 54th FVP Knoxville Nationals is August 6th through the 9th. And then in September, you've got Monster Jam and the Late Model Nationals. Uh, those events are always uh, entertaining. It's almost as much fun to, to watch the crowd as it is uh, as it is the action on the track with the, the Monster Jam folks. So that was a pretty cool event last year. Uh, don't forget to listen to the Checkered Flag program every Tuesday night. Talking about local dirt track racing, modifieds and stock cars mostly with uh, Jeff Kropp and Tony Paris. That's Tuesday nights here on KBOE, your station for racing, 7 o'clock to 8 o'clock Tuesday nights, the checkered flag. Don't forget about Dirt Dreams on MAV TV, Thursdays at 11 a.m., and then it replays again at 2 p.m. That's every Thursday, so have your DVRs set on Thursday for Knoxville Raceway's Dirt Dreams. Uh, thank you for listening tonight. I want to thank Jamie Ball for joining us on the show. We will see you Saturday night at the races at the Knoxville Raceway. My name is Eric Arnold. Thank you for joining us on Knoxville Raceway Inside Line here on KBOE 104.9 and KBOEradio.com. Thank you and have a